BBC Radio Scotland. Hello, this is Tim Vine, and this is a download from the BBC. For more information and our terms of use, visit www.bbc.co.uk forward slash Radio Scotland. Have I got news for you? I do indeed. This week's podcast features bias, offence and fags. Kicking things off, though, Ian Hislop. Always a great pal of the show. Pops up every now and again, sometimes by coincidence when there's a private eye annual coming out, but uh, today it's just for a blether. Ian Hislop, good morning. Good morning. No, I have got an ulterior motive. Oh, what are you selling? <laughs> no, I'm not selling anything. I'm just very worried about this idea that the BBC is, is closing down long-running shows. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> not, have you not heard? <laughs> so I'm coming on in support. This is appalling. Uh, so when you come on, uh, when you're called in by the Director General and he said, Ian, have I got news for you? Yeah. Uh, he really does mean, I have got news for you. <laughs> He'll know. Yeah. Do you know, the first time I did the show, Ian... Uh, my my sister's friend said, and you'll enjoy this with some Scottish blood, and she said, oh, I just saw your brother on that TV show. Um, I've got something to tell you. <laughs> 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 so that should have been the spin-off show. Every, every format needs a spin-off now. Yeah, okay. no, an, an extra slice of um, yeah. <laughs> have I got news. That's right. Um, you know, stars and rise. Because Countdown, you know, you've now got eight out of ten cats does Countdown. Yeah. Maybe you should have, have I got news for you, does Antiques Road Trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I like the idea of Paul and I agreeing to go in a car. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard me maybe saying there, Ian, then I, I'm meeting up with my, my old pals uh, from university days and we were all aghast last year when one of them popped his head up above the parapet and said, do you realise it's 40 years since we all went <sighs> off to uni? Uh, but you're not that far behind us, are you? When did you go off to? Yeah, no, university? it was it was ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Wave goodbye to the wife and children. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it was uh, pretty nearly seventy-eight to eighty-one. Right, um, oh, I was there. You're four years behind us then. But of course, you just did a three-year degree. We in Scotland like to stretch it. Yeah, and you like to do it thoroughly. We, we do indeed. <laughs> No, I was just thinking, if I'm looking for a university reunion, I'd just go into the office. Uh (laughs) (laughs) When Have I Got News For You comes back on, Ian's going to be sitting there with a guest who's going to be the the female head of MI6 (laughs) and Paul will have the chief of the Metropolitan Police. (laughs) Uh, Yes, um, the compulsory one woman. Uh, (laughs) Well, it's compulsory now, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's why I'm leaving. I'm having a sex change operation. (laughs) See if I can kick-start my telly career. Let's look ahead then uh, to, to what you might be getting up to, Ian. Um, yeah, well, I mean... You, you have, I, w- I would guess, you know, with the odd project uh, here and there, but other than that, a very settled career. I mean, you've, you've been private eye and you've had, have I got news for you for a long time. It has been pretty settled. Um, yes, I mean, that settled is one word. Unimaginative <laughs> is another. Um, lack of opportunity. <laughs> no offers. <laughs> All these are other phrases that could be used. <laughs> Your glass is half empty this morning, this lop, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not. No, I mean it's it's just been. You talk about what's been going on in the office, but it's just been a terrific week for the eye, really, because uh-huh. the HSBC story, which we kicked off about four years ago, um, we have one of our journalists is a former tax inspector. You'll like this, Fred. Yes. Um, who we lured over to the dark side. He used to work for HMRC, uh-huh. um, and then now he works for us. And he uncovered the original um, Swiss HSBC uh-huh. scandal. So um, it's been a fantastic week of um, everything coming home to roost because all these amazing files were finally released by uh-huh. the, the French government. Um, and then it just hit the proverbial fan. Didn't it just? Um, and... The other story we've been going on about is the Telegraph's relationship to its advertising. So, you know, on both the the banker bashing front and the uh, Fleet Street bashing front, uh-huh. uh, we've had a field day. But so it's um, it's been a very exciting week. Uh-huh. I, I just wondered, if, uh, you know, with HMRC and HSBC, yeah. we should just form another couple. We've got HSRC and yeah. HMBC. 
Well, we, we get in terrible confusion with the <laughs> idea that actually some prominent Tory has been putting money into uh-huh. HMRC, which is extremely <laughs> unlikely. <laughs> Your glass really is half full, isn't it, Fred? I have a, a I'm cer- coming on to be miserable. <laughs> I have a, a certain... Um, don't care attitude, I have to say. <laughs> You're just demob happy, that, that, aren't you? That's the expression I was looking for. Uh, don't care attitude equals demob happy. <laughs> Ian, for all the times you've visited us over the years, many, many thanks. Would you give my uh, love and best wishes to Mrs Hislop as well, please? I will do, and I'm um, just say I'm I'm very sorry you're going. It's uh, been a, a great show, and, uh-huh. well, and as I you. say, it's a very poor precedent. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Watch your back. With an intro like this, it's no wonder Gary Marshall comes on the show week in, week out. Gary is also standing by with his beard and his shirt, ready to answer <laughs> any his of... His shoes, his <laughs> trousers, look at him, all fancy. Mind you, with stories like this, we're thankful Gary comes back each week. Many years ago, I tried to stop smoking and I went to a hypnotherapist uh-huh. whose voice really annoyed me. And then they gave me a tape away <laughs> that I was to listen to and it would hypnotise me. And I got halfway through it and it was all about you. And then you go downstairs and you go into the cupboard uh-huh. and you open the door and they'll be like, an evil cake, and it's like I'd been given the stop eating cake tape instead of stop smoking. <laughs> so I smoked for another ten years, but I haven't eaten a cake since. It's unbelievable. It wasn't just Gary Marshall that got it in the neck from the hosts this week. Here's Joe Wheeler. What what is it that we are going to get so upset about? I mean, when we were kids in the playground, we used to have nicknames for each other that mm. was probably something to do with the physical attribute. You know, you'd have Specky Four Eyes or Tubby uh-huh. or you know Spindle Shanks, yep. you know Juggies, all these things. I know all four of them. <laughs> And every school had some. And the fact of the matter is, it may not have been particularly kind, but it was probably true. And, you know, you just Uh have to accept that. Well, Joe, uh, I I don't mean to cause any offence, but I I said I went to school with the four people whose nicknames you mentioned. (laughs) It was only three. I didn't go to school with anybody called Spindle Shanks because I didn't go to school in the 18th century. (laughs) But on a boat. No offence. No (laughs) offence. On Monday, Fred was adamant he'd never fallen asleep somewhere inappropriate. And then his wife phoned in. And joining us on the telephone is Aileen. Hello, Aileen. Hi, there. Oh. <laughs> I'm phoning about someone falling asleep. I don't know if you'll remember. Yeah. Christmas Day, in the middle of the meal. Christmas Day. Christmas All right, this Day. is a new one on me. In the middle of the meal, go on. Yes, uh-huh. you fell asleep. <laughs> I was still sitting up, though. You were still sitting, and granted, you weren't the only... Uh-huh. But my sister had spent hours preparing a lovely meal. Yes. We all sat down, had a lovely time. In fact, it was better when you were asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I was just savouring it, the wife. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to cheer, that was all. Uh, well, I'd probably oh. been up early in the morning. And... No. No. Uh, <laughs> Uh, had it been up late at night the night before fixing no, presents? No, no, not no. doing that. It was. It, uh, the other culprit had been on duty the night before, so he was um, he was forgiven. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. He'd been on call, uh, but the other thing is that um, you know I, I'm not accustomed to alcohol, and just to be polite, I would have accepted. <laughs> a, I would have accepted a small glass of white with the turkey, and that would have taken. Yeah, that was what it was. Yeah. I thought you were into to, to tell. Amy, that it was probably all three's uh, births that I had nodded off. <laughs> no, it was just the last one. Just the one. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I was saying it's because I'd been looking after Cara and Jack, but I don't think I've even got that excuse. No, yeah, I haven't. My mum was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fred's not the only person who's nodded off somewhere he shouldn't. Ian yeah. is on the line. Good morning, Ian. Hello, how are you doing? I'm all right, how are you? Good, good. Where have you nodded off, Ian? Well, I'm famous for getting my photos taken... Uh, because people think I f- fell asleep because uh-huh. I've got diabetes, type 2 diabetes, so right. you tend to kind of drop off noon again. Aye. And uh, the usual Friday night scenario, out for a few pints and then in for a curry, and uh-huh. in the middle of, in the middle of eating the curry, I fell asleep. <laughs> right. Head right into the curry. <laughs> Head into the curry. What was it you were uh, having? Oh, it was a corn mask. My face came up corn. bright orange. Nice orange face, <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, but it was OK. Did I'm you get a to, photo of that? Uh, well, I think it was before the days of having phones oh, right. uh, with cameras on them. Right. But uh, it would have been a good photo. But I managed to wipe it off and finish the rest of my curry. Well, I was going to ask if you liked it off, but you got it scraped <laughs> off. Or you could have cut the naan bread in two and held them up like big ears. <laughs> have you heard of ASMR, a.k.a. the whispering women of the World Wide Web? 
Fred likes the sound of them. This is where it loses me because they do things like role plays and uh-huh. people say that they find this very triggering. Triggering is the word that, that, that fans of right. this use. So they'll do th- like a role play of a haircut uh-huh. and they'll, they'll talk you through it and then they'll do the noise of the brush and the scissors and all the rest of it. Sign me up! But there, was one, <laughs> there was one that I saw was an alien abduction and medical experimentation role play and there's nothing right. relaxing about, Getting well, probed. I assume I've never been uh-huh. probed by an alien, uh-huh. but I can't imagine it's a particularly pleasant experience. Back to the haircut thing. Yeah. <laughs> Give that a go. I've <laughs> that film like. in a long time. <laughs> so, we're going to do things differently. Have you been your holidays? <laughs> Fred and Bill Whiteford gave away some secrets from BBC editorial meetings this week. I'm in for a meeting on the general election. All right. The general election, which is only 79 days away, he said, rapidly uh-huh. calculated. This will be to decide which, we, which bias the BBC oh, is going to... We've got all the biases, luckily, <laughs> as, as texters keep reminding us. We're biased every it's, which it's way. It's done with a roll of the dice, me. isn't it? I like, I like, <laughs> the, way dice. I like the way it's way personalised green. as well. <laughs> Here's some more BBC secrets. Two, is that a lot, 100 million? Yeah, yeah that's it's like it? hundreds of millions. I know, I know, it's like a hundred... But, you know, in the world of... Ah, zeros, in broadcasting, in I know. Zeros, well, that's I don't right. Know. It's just zeros, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know how much a TV program like here costs to make. Yeah, yeah. The report in Scotland, I think, is seven hundred and fifty thousand pounds an episode. That's that's right. <laughs> it's not. It's a joke. <laughs> well, you know, getting Kevin Spacey to host it uh-huh. was, yeah. that, that puts yeah. the price up a lot. And um, now the weather with Dame Judi Dench. Dench. <laughs> Fred will go to any length to cheer up his co-hosts. I was amusing Leslie the other day by letting her know that just when I wasn't feeling particularly happy with life, uh, a pigeon f- put a full stop in the proceedings. <laughs> Do you remember that TV show that Jack D did? Lead Do you remember balloon? it? Uh-huh. uh-huh. I was like, that is a perfect situation from that. <laughs> so he's just had a, a rejection and then uh-huh. he walks out into the into the light and... And a bird goes. Pfft. Yeah, that is just the ultimate. Yeah. Pfft. Well, so I have what, to say, what is it? listen, the listeners will wonder what what is the smart thing to do when that happens, and you've got a bit of pigeon poop on your shoulder. What do you do? I don't. I don't know. Well, you obviously wipe it with your left hand, and now you've got poop, poop in your, on your shoulder, shoulder and poop in your hand. <laughs> is that where it went? No, I then wipe my hand in my trousers. <laughs> I have triple poop. See when you send that email in. You're not thinking clearly when that happens. That's clearly what goes wrong. A tear running down my face. (laughs) Well, I'm glad I bring amusement to you. Taking a quick squint at the Stranger Stories of the Week are comedians Chris Forbes and Joe Caulfield. Is there Fife on Mars? (laughs) Uh (laughs) What's the story? Yeah, this is the story... um, most particularly in Scotland anyway, about uh, uh, Scotland's own Hannah Earnshaw from Fort William being shortlisted, one of the the people that have been shortlisted for this one-way trip to Mars. Sorry? Yeah, there's a... One-way? One-way trip to Mars. They just don't have the infrastructure to ask for a return yet. You uh, know, right. like, return uh-huh. to Mars, please, uh-huh. mate. Sorry. Um, yeah, they're, they're doing this uh, Mars One mission, uh-huh. it's called, where um, it's a privately funded thing. <gasps> And they're going to be... Um, I can't wait for the movie, this. It's going to be epic. And they're going to do a reality TV series uh, based on whittling the people down and then voting folk off to send uh-huh. to Mars. To... And then the second series is whether they come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people have said, well, NASA... The, the estimated budget for this, they've said, is $6 billion. Right. Um, but NASA are saying that's not even nearly enough. You no, know, I wouldn't have thought so. So... I mean, it cost a billion to get from Edinburgh Airport to York Place. <laughs> There's five Britons being included so far. Uh, three of them are kind of researchers in physics and astrophysics. There's a science lab, uh, lab technician. But then there's also just a guy that works for Virgin Media, <laughs> as if they want to take him out, make sure they've got some broadband TV, get some Netflix uh, out there. He got the knockback from the Galactic program. <laughs> he, I'll show them. We have to leave it there and move swiftly on to story number three. Here it comes. A and E6. Moved on too swiftly, A and E cigs. Yeah, this is the the story about how uh, patients and visitors will be banned from using electronic cigarettes in hospital grounds across Scotland within weeks. Uh, it'll be uh, smoke-free uh, grounds by April. Uh, the NH board, uh, NHS board has, has announced this. Have you ever smoked, Joe? 
Yes, and I think, to me, it seems clear that the NHS is just trying to drum up business, you know, because those waiting lists are just getting too short. They're going, let's keep everyone on the fags. I'd, I mean, obviously, I think the person who thought of it has not seen people smoking e-cigarettes because they're not. it's not like cigarettes. So, just of course, people use them to give up, so it seems yeah. ludicrous. People still look kind of uh, surreptitious when they've, when they've got an e-cigarette, though. It's kind of like, when you see them oh, inside, yeah. it freaks you yeah. out. I yeah, saw, it does. Yeah, I saw a woman on a train, and everyone immediately went, <gasps> like, oh, she's smoking inside, and then it went away, and we went, oh, it's one of those things. And you could tell she knew. She knew, she went, oh, they're all going to come over in a minute, and then I'll go, no, it's not one of those cigarettes. So, and they have to let their anger dissipate. Like, yes. The, like the vapour. <laughs> oh, I was going to have a go. Yes. I was just building that. I was, was going to tell them to stop. I, yeah. was, I so was. But you never actually do. I was at the football a few weeks ago and somebody lit up a cigarette in the stand and I was like, oh, I, was, I really folded my arms over. Oh. <laughs> That'd terrify them. <laughs> Greek tragedy. Yeah, are we talking finance, Joe? We are. Um, Greek debt crisis, as it's called. It's all very unfair. Now, I, I don't I don't understand, but basically Greece has got no money and a lot of it also because they didn't pay tax for many, many years. Lots of people didn't pay tax, so they didn't have money. And also I think the ordinary people were very badly treated because nobody really bothered to ask them to pay any tax either because the people in government were too busy siphoning off money and the books were done when they joined the euro it uh -huh. was they were, they were done to make them look as you do if you're trying to get a mortgage <laughs> you make them look oh i own loads are you Come saying on. that greece has two sets of books <laughs> i think they might yeah it's all so... very shawshank redemption isn't it <laughs> i'll leave you this week with an expose of chef's secrets here's award-winning chef jack o'donnell i love peas cold out of a tin marifa and I just, uh -huh. I, I get so embarrassed at, you know, even the kids or my husband coming in, what are you doing? And you're like, I You stand in there with a the tin yes, and, with a, the tin. and a fork uh -huh. and you don't eat the juice. No, I don't have the no, juice. No, that's revolting. That'd be weird. <laughs>